I use a ton of contact cement when working with EVA foam, so of course, I'm gonna buy a big can of the stuff for my cosplays. Which would have been a great way to save money if it didn't always go bad before I could use it all. A used can of contact cement just never works as well as a brand new one. Well, it turns out I was using it wrong because I didn't really understand exactly how it worked. So for today's tip, I'm going to show you how to maintain your contact cement. And uh, I'll also do my best to explain the science behind it. So contact cements can be a little confusing to talk about because any type of glue that creates an instant bond can be sold as a contact cement. The brand I use is called Barge and it's a neoprene based adhesive. And if you're cosplaying with EVA foam, well that's probably what you're using. So we all know how to apply contact cement, right? You just slather it onto two pieces of foam, wait 10 minutes, and then stick the two together. But what exactly is happening when we do this? Well, the neoprene glue in your can is actually thinned out by several different solvents. And these solvents are what keep the glue from sticking to itself so you can brush it evenly onto your foam. Then while you're waiting, those solvents evaporate away, and that leaves the glue behind. The glue on its own will form an instant bond the moment it comes into contact with itself. Well, great, right? Well, each time you open up your can, you're exposing it to air. And just like when you brush it onto your foam, those solvents are going to evaporate away. And without enough solvent in the can, the glue's going to become thick, it's not going to brush on as smoothly, and you're going to wind up with gunked up seams. But we can fix this, right? Well, as a first line of defense, you want to limit how often your contact cement is exposed to air. What I like to do is to store a small amount of glue in a separate glass jar to work out of. Working out of a smaller jar limits the amount of time your big can of cement is open and will make it last longer. But inevitably, your glue will still thicken up, and at that point, it will need to be thinned. So for that, you'll need a thinner. For the best results, you can buy a thinner that's made for your specific brand of contact cement. But for Barge, I found the stuff to be really intense to use. The smell kind of lingers around, and I don't like using it in my studio. So as a replacement, I use 100% acetone as my thinner, which you can find sold pretty cheaply as nail polish remover. If you remember from my previous video, I like to keep a bottle of this stuff nearby because I can also use it to remove contact cement stains from foam. And if you're using a brand of cement other than Barge, just look at the ingredients and do a materials safety check before you try thinning it out with acetone. When in doubt, use the manufacturer's recommended thinner. And one more safety note, if you store your contact cement or your thinner in a plastic bottle, just make sure it's made from HDPE plastic, which can handle those solvents. Just look for the recycling number two on the bottom of the bottle. So here's how I prep my jar of glue. Note that this only really works if the glue hasn't completely dried out, but if it still has some juice left in it, then you can start thinning it out by adding in a little bit of acetone and stirring. Continue adding in more thinner, a little bit at a time until the contact cement returns to its original creamy consistency. Just be careful not to add too much. If the glue is too thin, the bond won't be strong enough and you'll need to wait for it to thicken up again. I'll do this little dance each time that I work topping off my jar with a bit of glue from the can, and then adding enough thinner to be ready to go. All right, so one more thing before we go. I just got back from New York Comic Con, and I had a blast showing off my cosplays for Marvel's Zeus and God of War's Thor. And as always happens at a con, I left with a ton of ideas for content that I'm excited to start working on. And for that, I'm going to need your help. If you're a cosplayer that would be interested in sharing your photos or even appearing in one of my videos, hop into my Discord, for I'll be posting more information soon. And that's it for today. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful, and head on over to my Twitch if you want to hang out with me in my studio. I'll see you all next time.